It's interesting what you said earlier, just well, just now, basically about being like, you know, when you said I'm 40, I can do those things. I can, you know, live off of the many years that I have put into this industry. And I was thinking about that the other day because same, I've been in this industry. I'm 41. I've been in this industry for 22 years and you know, I, you know I'm still working from home. I also have an OnlyFans <laughs> um, that is saving my butt right now. Uh, I have this podcast, which has been really helpful and other streams of revenue. Um, it sounds like you make some kind of residuals with Evil Angel, which sounds something similar to like probably what I remember when I was shooting Lisa Ann for Evil Angel. She had some kind of deal with them, which mm -hmm. is which is correct. That is not common with most brands. And in the brands that I shoot for, for Mind Geek and for Playboy, I definitely don't get residuals. It's a flat fee, and then I have no ownership over the content. I get nothing after that. But fortunately. You know, I have my own website. I've always had other streams of revenue mm -hmm. because I have to say, if there's one thing that my mom taught me is to never trust that any one person, company, is client is ever going to take care of you, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so work has obviously slowed down. Like I said, I'm still working, but I'm not as busy as I was. And I was feeling guilty kind of about that the other day. I was thinking I should be doing more. I should be working more. This feels strange that I can take naps in the middle of the day, you know? Interesting. But but then I thought to myself, you know, you've put over 20 years into this industry and you've yeah. worked your ass off for 20 years. Yeah. Isn't it okay to maybe, you know, take a break and live off of the residual income that you have coming in from these other revenue streams and go a little bit easier on yourself? So what you said just now literally echoed those thoughts that I was having like two days ago. Why is it that you think that you feel like you should be working more? Is it because you feel like you as a person don't have value if you're not working or because like you are part of an ecosystem that supports like, like we are sharks and we support like all of the other fishes. Like, is it like which form of responsibility or well, is it social responsibility or is it like, like emotional masochism or kind of both? Oh, it's hundred percent both. It yeah. is definitely, I've, you know, like you said, COVID has, has stopped the machine and it's forced all of us to sit down and think about like our, our, our careers and our, our role in our careers. And I have definitely come to realize, and this is actually something I realized before, but it's been popping up more that I 100% place my value and whether or not I'm worth anything in my career and also getting pregnant has made me think about that too, because before I had this fear of getting pregnant and having a child because that was going to take me out of the race. And then I was going to lose, you know, because uh -huh. it's all about success and it's all about like how much money you make and like how many AVN awards you've won. I've won zero by the way. Um, and that kind of thing. So, so definitely like my personal identity is very much wrapped up in my work. And then also too, I feel that my crew depends on me for work as well. And I feel mm -hmm. like I have people who I need to give work to that I need to, that I need to provide for. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. And then also too, like, I'm, you know, like, I don't want people to forget about me. <laughs> so this morning I was talking to my very close friend who is a mainstream director. Who's not, who's never worked in porn. And, um, I know him because I had a short stint working crew in reality TV, like in the middle of my sex worker career in my twenties. And he was asking me about why porn people are so um, driven, even if they don't have to, to shoot during coronavirus or what, what, just like a lot of different questions about like the crux of a lot of what motivation comes from in porn. And I said, it's because we are validated by our workplace in ways that other industries are not. Hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do I think that sex workers, specifically Southern Californian porn performers and crew members are validated by their work in ways that other industries are not? Um, there is, it's, it's obvious because you just did a whole thing about like, and, and you mentioned Holly, like how many AVN awards you had, which in my opinion is like, no measure whatsoever of somebody's porn success, but it is. And it's just because that's my opinion. Like we don't live inside of a vacuum. I also have a fuck ton of AVN awards. So I, that's a position that I can say those things. Um, I don't, we, 
I don't know why we feel this way, but on some level we feel like we're not good unless they've told us that we were good. And maybe there's some deep, deep, dark shadow fucking land id shit where we doubt ourselves. Um, it could be like why, like a lot of us have imposter syndrome and it could be where imposter syndrome comes from. Um, it could be things about how we were raised. It could be things about being female. Um, it could be things about sex work in general. It's such a deep, dark cave to start spelunking into why we derive validation from our workplace. But I think that one thing that you can say about it is that it's an undeniable fact. Mm, Yeah. You hit on so many marks there that totally apply to me. I think, you know, being a woman and I think also working in sex work, you know, we're like the black sheep, of the entertainment industry, right? So we have to work so much harder to prove ourselves. I mean, have you ever been on I know you've obviously been on a mainstream set because you just said that you were but because I've talked to other people in the adult industry as well and we're always so flabbergasted by going on a mainstream set and seeing how many people they are there are and how like a lot of people aren't don't seem to be working that hard that there's just a lot of people standing around doing nothing Mm -hmm. and how we have to do so many different things as one person, you know, I'm sure that, that this is the same for you. I mean, you're a performer and a director, but I'm sure that you also like you produce and you stop and, you know, I produce, I style, I do the craft services. I am the PA. I clean the come up off the floor. I do the paperwork. Like I do the finances. I do everything. I have like 5,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it always struck me when I go to a mainstream set, I'm like, what are all these people doing here? What are their jobs? They're so, it feels like they're so lazy. So has has that ever like crossed your mind? I think that that is a really big issue for me and I've addressed it, been able to address it like when the machine stopped and getting off of the machine, like when COVID stopped the machine um, to say that I um, have six jobs. I don't have one job you know, and we consider it to be one job. We consider director and production manager oftentimes to be the same thing. They are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's specifically because of the um, small run nature of adult product and because of the smaller budget. We don't have the money to hire um, a bunch of different people to do a bunch of different jobs. Um, Even though I think that porn now is more professional and looks better and is a better product than it was in the time when they did have that money, Um, And there are certainly way more fucking talented people doing shit. Like I remember when I first started shooting camera, people were like, Oh my God, wow, you're a girl and you shoot camera. What's that like? And I was always really fucking snotty because fuck that. I was like, Oh, it's really hard to press the buttons with my slippery labia. But now like nobody talks to me like that anymore. No one's like, Oh, you're a woman and you do camera. Cool. Like, because there are so many more and porn is so different now. And there are so many like really, really, um, overly qualified people like any of us could fucking like knock down mainstream store at any fucking moment for a lot of different jobs but we choose to be in sex work because there is there is a difference between mainstream and sex work and I think that that difference for me one of them anyway is that we are more real and we are we are more raw right we're, we're like documentarians like documentarians and we are catching like nature in the wild even if you set people up to do things like a, a, the large majority of the action of porn is unscripted, you know, and that's the, the flavor of it, that we're going for chemistry. We're going for how people would actually touch each other. And, and you're not going to get that on a mainstream set. It's very contrived. And for us, it's much more organic. Um, being on a mainstream set for me and seeing all the people who didn't do that many jobs, I was kind of happy for them because it must be nice to actually be paid for the work that you do. Because if I broke down the six jobs that I have and the amount that I'm paid per hour for all those six jobs, it would be below minimum wage. Thank God I work for myself. And there's like, I'm not breaking any laws by doing that. I've paid PAs way better than I've ever been paid for jobs because I'm like, well, they're cleaning up. Like you said, come off the floor. Mm-hmm. Like they're doing a biohazard. Like they should be compensated for this. And in porn, it's just not like that. It's just not how we function. Um, I I do like to be able to step back and say like, well, if I am making this amount of money, what what should my workflow look like? 
like you fall into porn and you fall into contracts and you know it's a momentum and speed and then it's hard to look down and it's hard to look up and it's like being on the machine um and so being off the machine lets me kind of look at like well how much time should I be spending exercising and dealing with my diet instead of calling and making sure people got their tests or not um, or these other things that we have to do as directors that should technically be another position. So it's nice to be able to have that perspective. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.